at the, what is happening in Nigeria today, there's so many issues of certificates, age, all sorts of one falsification or the other, all over, within the leaders. There's no way people can be doing this and be able to do the right things because that means they live in a falsified life. Welcome to Paul Ladies on the Wheel with Jay, and this is LA TV. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, was on Arise TV 24 hours ago, and he talked so much about the certificate forgery of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president-elect, according to the obedient and articulated fan base, and most Nigerians believe that he was selected by the Independent National Electoral Commission, um, INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, because he never secured the constitutional requirement to be the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is that um, you needed 25% in Abuja, and that he never won the election across the country as the Independent National Electoral Commission stated, of which it was a bone of contention at the Presidential Petition Tribunal, of which the judgment given by the tribunal was in favor of the uh, the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, where they stated that most of this um, evidence provided by the uh, opposition, the Labour Party and Atiku Abubakar of PDP are inconsequential even to the fact that the certificate forgery which has now been confirmed by the Chicago State University is not really really a thing to worry about. So, but before I give you the video of what a uh, pres uh, presidential candidate of Labour Party, you know many people refer to him as the president actually his Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, let me quickly bring to your notice that the Chicago State University released the document of Bola Ahmed Tinubu to His Excellency Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party yesterday, early hours of today. And this has sparked a lot of reaction on social media and uh, most mainstream media reported it that uh, President Bola Metinibo has been vindicated or has been exonerated. But if you look at those documents carefully and you look at them closely, you will discover that uh, the person that was admitted, according to the transcript, shows that it was a female and that the person graduated from uh, Southwest College, a school that came into inception in 1974 but was admitted through that school by 19 i mean he like he graduated from that school in 1970 that is according to the president but the transcript says otherwise so you know all these are the things that uh uh as is sparking a lot of reaction and also the social security number which shows a different thing entirely however I will be bringing a lot of details concerning this and all that you needed to know because this is a really, really technical issues that we cannot just dive into. Knowing fully well that no news platform like Sahara Reporters and People's Gazette has been accused that they have been paid off not to report these issues. And it surprises, you know, to my greatest surprise, or will I say that uh, I'm not surprised that I've not seen them report anything about the Chicago State University released of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinibu academic record up to this minute that I am releasing this video. So, could it be that they were also bought off is something that we cannot um, ascertain. But as it stands right now, I have not seen any of their publication in regards to Chicago State University. But we saw the cables, you know, the PMS and some other, um, you know, uh, mainstream uh, media or newspaper outlets reporting that uh, Tinubu has been exonerated. But however, what we saw at the document is quite different from what they are reporting, of which we'll do a detailed analysis and bring them bit by bit. But here is what His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi said about certificate forgery. And I put it to what people asked me about the judgment by this and everything, and I said, I remain positive. Because when I look at what is happening now, and comments of respected 
highly respected, I would say, and less respected Nigerians, and Nigerians in generality, he underscores the erosion of value that comes to the heart of the urgency of building a new Nigeria, where things will be properly done based on people saying the truth, doing things rightly within the laws and behaviors that is required of a modern society. So for me, I feel positive. On other areas, and maybe as we go along, along I will clarify what is happening and everything. Thank you. Of qualification, I never said anything with regards to improving the degree of doing this. The issue of qualification is the issue of leaders making statements doing things that are honest and truthful. This is an issue of honor and integrity. It is the foundation on which you build society. If you look at what is happening in Nigeria today, there's so many issues of certificates, age, all sorts of one falsification or the other, all over, within the leaders. There's no way people can be doing this and be able to do the right things because that means they live in a falsified life. And that is not good morally and a sign it should be given to the society. There's so many great people in the world who did not go to school. And I can tell you, America today, one of the highest or I would say the greatest president in America I've ever had is Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln did not go to a former school. In fact, his entire education is less than one year, formal education. Because he came from a very extremely poor family. His education was by borrowing books and everything, which he did later. But he was able to show, if you read his history, you show that he came from a very poor home and did not have formal education. He didn't have to say he read the PhD here or he did this one here and then there's an argument like what we're having in all over Nigeria today which is bringing the credibility of our nation into question. If you come to the UK, one of the greatest prime ministers is Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill is known to have had a poor academic record. In fact, his academic record was very bad that his father had to enlist him in the army. Even when he went to take an exam to be able to be enlisted into the British Military Academy, he started three times before he could pass. Eventually, he became a prime minister and became a great prime minister. You go to the corporate world, the biggest company we have today in terms of market value is Apple. The founder is a dropout, a school dropout. His history shows that. The second biggest company is Microsoft. At least Apple today is about 2.9, if I'm right, about 2.9 trillion company. When African GDP is about 2.9, so it's about the same thing as African GDP. The second biggest company is Microsoft, founded by Bill Gates. Bill Gates is a university dropout. He's written there. It's not, there's no question. The fourth richest person in the world, Larry Ellison, is a poor person. The mother had to give up for adoption when he was nine months really have to have all the degrees in the world to be great. What, but you need to be honorable about your past so we can know who exactly you are and everything. The world are bound by great people who have 
poor past and no education and that forms part of their greatness oh. so what did you think about this whole drama is it over or we're we about to see another drama going forward from today because as it stand right now the social security number is showing a different thing the name from the transcript is showing a female and not a male so the question now is what happened next are we going to see a deep investigation the deposition of this uh, uh document will be by tomorrow which is early hours of tomorrow morning uh in chicago um in the court on you know which will be done under oath so whether the forensic auditing or the, the forensic uh, auditing and the lawyers representing Atiku Abubakar are ready for this matter is something that we are yet to, you know, it's something that we are waiting for to see if they are actually ready for this matter. Remember, I once said, politics, it is not about emotion, about who gets what, when, and how. It's all about interest and negotiation. Will uh, uh, Atikul Abu Bakal be reached out to? Will the West be reached out to? Will this whole thing just end just like that? Remember, the elites don't really care about the masses. They only care about their interests. Stay tuned with me as I will bring you much more details about this.